to the house. In 2 Samuel chapter 5, David, watch this, had just become the king of all Israel. He has fought the battle against the Philistines where he had a great strategy, he had great creativity, and he had great sensitivity where they defeated the Philistines, chapter 5, verse 25, from Gebor unto Gazor. This scripture, chapter 6, now becomes a pivotal point in David's life as a person, in David's career as a king, but also in David's ministry as a man of God after God's own heart. After he has defeated the Philistines from Gebor unto Gazar, and they even called the place of the first defeat of the Philistines, Belparasim, where he declared it the Lord of the breakthrough, uh -huh. David knows and acknowledges that God is with him up until this point. But he still realized that he has a problem. The problem that David has is that in the midst of all of his victory, and even though he knew that God was with him, he didn't have the God-given symbol or identity that God gave the forefathers, Moses, to remember who it is he was representing. Yeah. Let me break it down for you. What do you do or what do you have or what is it that you do that keeps the people identifying you as a believer in the house of God? There has to be something about you that show others who you are in God. Okay, let me back it up. You got the victory. You got your praise. You got your worship. But God has given them an identity through the Ark of the Covenant. And the Ark of the Covenant is not in the possession of the king. And it is not in the house or the city of Jerusalem. So even though David has much victory, even though David has much accolades, even though David is rolling, he's balling, he's shot calling, he's the head boss, he's the king of Israel, but he still don't have the presence of God in the house of God. And he realized that there's a problem. Let me tell it to you like this. You can have all the money in the world, you can have the best job all day long, but if you don't have the presence of God in your life, you have a problem. Am I talking to anybody in this place today? You can grasp, do you still go to work with a job that God has blessed you with and you still act funny, you still act flaky, flaky and you act like you don't even know who God is? Can people identify to God in your life? Can I come to your house and you don't have it all kind of crazy stuff all over everywhere but there's something in your house that represents the God in your life? Can I get in your car and the music that you go into is something that people can see the God in you. You're not talking to anybody Come on, in Bishop. You can't have success without the presence of God in your life. Look at your neighbor right quick and say, you gotta have his presence. You, you gotta have your presence because without his presence you can go high and people can put you up there but people can show them and bring you back down. Without his presence you can have all the bank accolades in the world but then as soon as you miss a note, they'll take that loan, they'll take that car, they'll take that house I don't know about you, but whatever I got in my house, I want God to have his hands on it. I want his anointing to be on it. I want his presence to be on it because I want to keep everything he gave me. Look at your neighbor and say, you better keep that husband. You better keep that. You better keep that wife. You better keep that wife. If you want to keep them, they better have a, you better have an anointing in your house. Come on up here, college students. If you got a real boyfriend, you got a real girlfriend, they don't mind you grabbing their hands and not looking at them in their eye with some lovey-dovey sometimes. They ought to mind you and be excited about you grabbing their hands, looking in their eyes, and saying that this is nothing but the Lord. I'm praying for you. I'm encouraging you. I'm blessing you. I'm going to be watching over you with the power of God in your life.